All Arnav ever wanted was a quiet life and somewhere to test out his inventions. Technologically brilliant, his life has unfortunately been tinged by bad luck, one thing after another. He thought that this job might be the thing to bring him back to the level. But old secrets are rearing their ugly heads, and now he's so far from the plan that he's starting to get nervous. Welcome to Team B, a war robot story. Episode 5, Jack Daw. So we're the fall guys. What does that mean? Well, it's not good. Uh, none of it's good. I'm sure our employer just also really needed that MRI machine. Maybe it was most convenient to just take both at once. Mm. I don't know anymore. Oh. oh, I'm such an idiot. What? There was someone else in the system. When I was just about to log out, there was some slightly weird activity. I assumed it was just some staff member logging in, so I wiped my session and got out so they wouldn't see it and sound the alarm. But I'm starting to think that maybe wasn't what was going on. And you didn't think to mention this before? It slipped my mind, seeing as I was immediately attacked from all sides. That sort of thing tends to make a pretty strong impression. So, you know, thanks for the warning, but actual help would have been nice. How come you got out of there anyway? What? I, uh, I told you. One tech guy against two security bots? How did you manage that if you've got no field experience? Oh, shit. He's a double agent! Uh, put it away, Ash. I'm not a double agent. I'm just not operating under my usual identity. Meaning what? Uh, have you heard of Jackdaw? Sound vaguely familiar? That's me. Oh, shit. Really? <laughs> I, I, I think at this point I may as well stop pretending. I'm not as inexperienced as I look. I'm good at what I do. Really good. And sometimes that means you get a price put on your head. Okay. I've never heard of you. Hmm. <laughs> well, what do you do? I mean, basically just this, under a different name. And with a higher price tag. Arnav posed my real name. I went back to it after what happened. Right. I'm an expert in electronic engineering, which you may have picked up on already. I work as a merc, but not on the combat side. I work on robots. Upgrade them. Make them stronger. Oh, one of those. The man's a legend. I knew they didn't manage to wipe you out. Yeah, well, unfortunately some people can get annoyed when they can't afford me, especially when their rivals can. Which is how come I ended up in this mess? About a year ago, a merc squad called me in to do some upgrades on their Raveners. Standard stuff. Should have been a three-day job at most. Except that the previous set of repairs I did, turns out I'd upset some petty little warlord and they'd put a price on my head. They waited until I'd fixed up their Raveners, of course, because who doesn't like to get extra work out of someone they're planning to kill? And then when I was working on the last of the set, they attacked. They were dumb. They'd assumed I'd never driven a bot before. I mean, not that I'd been great at it. But turns out adding a couple of extra mechanical arms makes driving a whole lot easier. They chased me down for... Three, four days. Jesus. Gotta love energy drinks. I was running on nothing but caffeine and adrenaline. Then I figured I wasn't getting out of there, so I may as well take them down with me. But it turns out that the upgrades I'd finished were enough to balance the fight. I took out the lot of them and got out of there before anyone else turned up. I kept Ravener. It wasn't like the mercs were going to pay me, and he's been with me ever since. The contract's still out and I've managed to freeze my account, so I just uh, went back to my old name. I gave Ravener a new paint job and no one was any the wiser. This is supposed to be me hiding out, doing low-level jobs. For all the good that's done me. So how does the black box play into that? Ravener saved my life. He had a bit of a non-standard wiring that meant his install took a tiny bit longer and, well... If I'd been fully finished when they came for me, I'd have been done for. And I've spent a whole lot of time piloting him since then. He's adapted for me. He's... I don't know. A friend. I didn't know how much he meant to me until I'd nearly crashed out. The black box is a record of that. Of the time we've spent together. Seriously? I mean, <laughs> I mean, it also reveals my identity. And some of the footage is, uh, kind of embarrassing. After three days of driving, I wasn't exactly lucid. Mmm. 
<laughs> yeah, uh, we, we shouldn't stay out here too long. Louis right, come on. <sighs> so what are we supposed to do now? It's pretty obvious the boss isn't coming to get us. And I doubt we'll be able to fight our way out. I'm sorry. I'm truly sorry. Hmm. There is one thing we can do. But you're not gonna like it. What is it? We can hack into App Meter. I mean, I'm okay with that. I'm not. It's the only way I can think of tracking down the guy who sent us here. I've told you everything I know. This was on a need-to-know basis. I guess they don't need me to know everything. I'm stranded here too, aren't I? Looks like it. You're not telling us everything. I've given you all the information I have. That's what someone with secret information would say. The problem is, there's information you probably don't know you have. What? It's pretty clear that our employer, whoever they are, isn't exactly a straightforward guy. I reckon it wouldn't be out of character for you to have some secret information you don't know about, trapped behind a mental block in your mind just in case it's needed. Or there might even be root permissions that we can access, make some changes. I'm proprietary software. If you open me up, you'll break my warranty. Anyone else concerned about the warranty? No? Mm hmm. Louis, he's not one of your strays. He's an android who holds the key to reaching whoever dropped us on this godforsaken rock. Mm -hmm. What's Louis saying now? He wants to know if Atmeter will be okay. He should be, so long as nothing gets tripped. Okay, so you hack into his head, then what? I'd like to know more about what your plan is if you trip any of my safeguarding software. Well, best case scenario, I unlock an encrypted part of his mind, if it's there, and we find out something we can use. Ah, blackmail. I like it. Could be blackmail. Could be more information about this site that we haven't been given. The location of escape crafts, or something like that. I'm guessing the other team had more accurate blueprints than us. And worst case scenario? My self-destruct mechanism triggers and you're all blown to pieces by shrapnel. And then your remains are eaten by feral cats. You're bluffing. I don't know. Self-destruct mechanisms are built into a lot of tech these days. What? Why? It stops unauthorized repairs and upgrades. I'm usually pretty good at avoiding them, but then I'm usually working with mechs who are about ten times bigger than AppMeter. I am still here. A friend of mine nearly blew their face off trying to tweak their comms device. <sighs> here. Use this. Oh. What's that? That's AppMeter's wiring schematic. It should stop you from tripping the wrong circuit. If I'm even wired up the way I thought I was. Who knows? <laughs> Thank you. I do understand where you're coming from. I'm not exactly happy to be in this situation either. And if the alternative is just staying here, well, you'll run out of food eventually, and at some point, I'll start to rust. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But if you do trip the wrong switch and I explode, don't say I didn't warn you. Uh-huh. God, I hope this doesn't blow my head off. Come on. You know exactly what you're doing. I've studied you. It's been a long time since I've worked on anything this delicate. Wait, you studied me? I like to be aware of what's going on in the contracts market. I wasn't on your hit, but I know what you're capable of. Hacking app meters is well within your expertise. You bypass that lab security system, no sweat. This isn't Icarus Technologies. This is just some bog-standard droid. Hey, again, I am still here. And I'm making a big sacrifice, potentially. Do you have an alternate way to get out of here? No. Well then, go on, kid. This is your job. Uh, where are you going? Well, he did mention flying shrapnel. Uh, go way outside. There's no point in all of us exploding. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, I've got the main panel unscrewed. Abby, sir, can you feel when I wiggle this wire? Please don't do that again. Sorry, I, um, okay. There's a failsafe here. I should be able to bypass this if I... Orna? <laughs> Our crew stands staring at a worrying tableau. Arnav, tech genius thrown across the room. Abmita, 
his head splayed open and a grainy projection appearing from within. And the projection itself? A mysterious, masked man who laughs and laughs. What does it mean? What does the future hold? Find out next week on Team B. Team B is based on the War Robots game universe. Play now at wr.app slash story. You heard Kristen DiMercurio as Linda, Brandon G. Green as Louie, Nathan Blades as Arnav, Felix Trench as Abmita, and Graham Roat as Ash. You also heard the voice of Christopher Byron as narrator. Caroline Minx was the sign language consultant. The series was written, recorded, and directed by Beth Crane and Headley Knights of Battlebird Productions. Sound design was by Ilya Viktorov, produced by Pixonic. 